friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and we are going to be doing my mid-month wrap-up today. So it is currently the 13th. Yeah. It is currently the 13th when I'm filming this and I have read 12 books. My I am on track for my Goodreads goal of 365, which is a book a day. Um so I was behind twice this month already. So it hasn't been going Although I've read 12 books, I've felt a little slumpy, especially because a lot of the books that I've been reading I have not rated very highly. Um, I haven't had really any that I like really, really loved except for one. Um, so I've already had a, a couple of disappointments of books that I thought I would really love that I didn't. So it's been interesting so far. I also have been watching a lot more TV. Lately, I hadn't been watching TV for like the entire last part, a couple of months of 2021. Um, and I've gotten kind of back into watching TV. So between not having books that I'm loving and wanting to watch more TV, it's leading me to watch more TV and I just haven't been reading as much. But that being said, I do still have 12 books to talk about. So the first book that I read in 2022 was Fierce Obsessions by Suzanne Wright. This is the sixth book in the um, Phoenix Pack series that I've been reading. Um, this one I gave four stars. I did enjoy it. It was not my favorite in the series, but it did, I did like the mystery element that they had in this one. Um, it follows Riley, who you meet in the previous book. She is a, a bird shifter, and it follows Tao, who I've been waiting for his story because he's been really interesting. He's one of the enforcers in the Phoenix pack. Um, and I've been waiting for his story because I've liked him since like book one. Um, so I did enjoy this, but it was not my favorite in the series. So I gave it four stars. Um, then I did a reread of Line Mates and Study Dates for the second book that I read in 2022. This one came out on audio for the first time in on De uh, December 31st. So on New Year's Eve, um, this came out on audio and I wanted to, I always re, um, ever since I caught up with the series, I, every time the new one comes out on audio, I do a reread um, because the audios come out so f much later. Um, so I love this book. I gave it four stars. Um, I really, really like Asher and Cole Asher. This is an MM hockey um, one and Asher is like kind of a hard ass. He's got a lot going on and he doesn't have the most, he's not like, I wouldn't call him a sweetheart. Like he's not, he doesn't have the most uh, loving personality, um, but he's been through a lot and Cole really gets under his skin and helps to make him show his vulnerable side. So it's very good. I really like it. Then I uh, got The Arc of the Best Men by Serena Bowen and about three chapters into reading The Arc, um, the prequel novella got released that I didn't know existed. So I listened to that one. Um, I stopped The Best Men and went to listen to that one. And this is a prequel to The Best Men where it has the main characters. There, uh, This is MM. So um, the, it has both of the main main male characters meeting for the first time. It like shows their meeting and I really do think that it's important to read this before reading The Best Men because it does give you a lot more background and it made, to me, made the characters a little bit more likable. Um, so I gave the novella four stars um, and then after I finished that I went back to finish The Best Men um, this one is Serena Bowen and Lauren Blakely's new book. They co-wrote this together. Follows Asher and Mark. Asher is a very free-spirited, go with the flow, um, very rich guy. And Mark is very straight-laced. He is, uh, very into math and he's a single father. He's divorced. Um, he got married very, very young and he's bisexual and, uh, Asher is gay. And... Uh, Asher's best friend and Mark's sister are getting married and Asher and Mark are both made the best men basically um, and are required to do wedding tasks together and end up developing a relationship. 
I unfortunately did not love this one. I gave it three and a half stars, so I did enjoy it. Um, but I love Serena Bowen, um, but Lauren Blakely has always been a little bit hit or miss for me. Um, and I was a little nervous going into this one. Um, and I just, I didn't feel the connection between the characters as much and it felt kind of rushed, if that makes sense. Um, because the beginning felt so slow that once the relationship like actually got on board, it felt rushed, like if that makes sense. So it was slow and then it was too fast. So I just, I didn't love how it developed. Um, but I still gave it 3.5 stars because I still found it enjoyable. Then I read Wild Hunger by Suzanne Wright, which is book seven in the Phoenix Pack series. This one I gave 4.5 out of five stars. This one follows Frankie, who did not know that the Phoenix Pack existed. She gets an email from one of the uh, members of the Phoenix Pack um, who says that she's um, wants to meet her because she is her niece. Frankie is uh, this woman's niece and her Frankie's grandmother is dying um, and wants to see Frankie before she dies. And Frankie's like, you've got the wrong person. And they're like, no, I don't think we do. And she finds out that her grandparents who are humans have been lying to her her whole life um, because they wanted to keep her away from the wolves. Um, and then she decides to meet with the Phoenix Pack. She learns about her history and she ends up being Trick, one of the Enforcer's mates. Um, I really, really liked this one. Gave it 4.5 stars. I really liked Frankie as a character. There is a uh, mystery element in this one like there is in all of them. And I didn't guess it. I guessed part of it. I definitely guessed part of it, but I there like the big reveal didn't guess it and I'm usually really good at guessing so I did really like this one. Then I read Waking Olivia after uh, Jess from Peace Love Books talked about this and then so many other people read it um, but I am with Jess on this one. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. This is the only new five star book that I've read so far this um, month, this year. Um, and I, I really, really liked this one. So this one is about Olivia who has so much trauma and so much stuff going on in her past that she has PTSD basically. And her form of PTSD is she, instead of sleepwalking, she sleep runs and she relives this like nightmare over and over again every time she goes to sleep and she sprints and runs while she's sleeping. Um, and she has no idea how to stop it. She doesn't know why it's happening. She doesn't know what to do about it. Um, and so she's recently transferred to a new school because she lost her scholarship at her division one um, track um, school that she was going to. She lost her scholarship for division one track. Um, and so now she's at a D3 school and they're kind of relying on her because she's the one that she was D1. So they're like, you're a really good runner. Um, so they're relying on her, but they also don't trust her because she has some anger issues. <laughs> My light is flickering. I'm so sorry. Um, but Olivia has some anger issues. And so she ends up having a amazing relationship with her coach at this new school. Um, she... She doesn't want to tell him um, because she's embarrassed. I mean, she just, she's like, he, but he, he's telling her not to run um, because once outside of practice, because when she gets to practice and when she gets to the uh, meets, she's exhausted. And he's like, don't run outside of practice. And then he sees her running and gets super angry at her. And she's like, I can't help it. And she finally breaks down and she tells him about it. And he doesn't believe her at first. Um, but very quickly realizes that he was wrong. Um, and he makes it kind of his mission to help her. Um, and they become very close and they don't want to cross the boundaries of coach and player. Like he doesn't want to lose his job and he doesn't want to um, 
cross any lines um but he's very attracted to her and he cares about her deeply and you can tell that he cares about her deeply he really he just wants to protect her and he wants to help her um and he goes very much out of his way to help her um I will say there he does have a girlfriend for a very large majority of this book however I understood why he wanted to have that girlfriend he obviously didn't like her um but he had his reasons for having this girlfriend and although I feel horrible for that girlfriend and that um emotional cheating is still cheating um he has that girlfriend as like a boundary as like a oh I he's he's basically using her as a boundary and he's using her as a as a shield for his feelings towards Olivia and I I know that might make people not like this book um but it was something that I was able to look past and uh still very much enjoy this book. Um, there were a couple of things that just I know might bother some people um but I was very willing to look past them and love this book. Then after reading that I had such a hard time coming finding another book. I, that's another thing that I've had this month where I've just been really having difficulty choosing books that I want to read um and like what I'm in the mood for and I couldn't sleep one night so I did a reread of Us by Serena Bone and L. Kennedy because it's just one that I knew that I loved and I just wanted something that I just really enjoyed and so I did a reread of this. Loved it so much. Second book in a duology. Him is the first one. Hockey players. Friends to lovers. M.M. So good. Then after that I read Radiance by Grace Draven. This one I really really wanted to love. This was one of my big disappointments this month because so many people love this book and I really wanted to love this um and I did enjoy it I gave it 3.5 stars because if it was just if I was just rating the romance in this book it would be five out of five stars the romance in this book was beautiful the rest of it the plot the story like was so slow I literally felt like nothing happened. Um, these two characters from different, basically different species, got had an arranged marriage, and then they traveled somewhere, and then they ate dinner, and then they did some more traveling, and then they ate dinner, and then they talked to each other, and then they. It, it was like nothing happened. Nothing happened, and it felt so slow. And I was very much bored in certain parts of this book. And found myself kind of wanting to like skip ahead to the parts where they were like actually together and like could be like like their 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 sweet moments together was what I was looking for and I did not care about the rest of it at all um I gave it 3.5 stars because I absolutely loved the romance in it but oh my lord is it slow then I read High Risk Rookie by Odette Stone this one is a uh, part of the Vancouver Wolves series. I've read the first three books and really enjoyed them and this is the last one so I wanted to finish out the series and this one was my least favorite in the series. Um, it is about a man named Levi who wants to play hockey. He is being scouted basically by the Vancouver Wolves to play hockey and the sports agent named Krista wants to sign him and she goes to get him from Mexico to bring him to Vancouver so he can meet with the Vancouver Wolves owner. Um, and while they're in Mexico, while she's there picking him up, they accidentally get drugged and then get married. Um, and they have to hide their marriage from everyone. She's like, I can't tell anyone. This could ruin my career. This could ruin your chances and all this stuff. Um, but they're very much attracted to each other and it makes it very difficult. Um, I thought that the conflict in this book and the reason for why they couldn't be together was slightly dumb. Like I thought that they just needed to communicate better. Um, <laughs> and it was just the kind of thing, I just, this one, 
felt like you know those moments in a, when you're watching like a horror movie and you're looking at the the girl the dumb girl who had hears a noise in the basement while she's home alone and it's like and you're all yelling at the tv and going don't go in the basement don't go in the basement and then she goes in the basement that's how I felt while reading this book because I was like these the sheep it seemed like they had no intuition um they had no common sense so they would be like so there was this one scene where his hotel room got broken into and his phone had been moved and he immediately was like oh no the video because he has this video on the, his phone that proves their marriage that he was like I don't want anyone to if this gets out that is the end um and then the phone gets moved while and he's like um so he's worried because his ho hotel room gets broken into and so he goes in and he's thinking about this video and he sees that his phone's been moved and then he's like but my phone's still here so it's fine and I'm like, your phone, somebody was obviously in your hotel room. Your phone has been moved. Maybe you should mention the fact that you have this video to Krista, to somebody else. Like, and then there was later on when she was like, oh, um, her, her ex is, her ex-boyfriend, um, is like stalking her basically and super being really awful to her. And she doesn't tell anyone. And she doesn't... She's like, it'll, he'll, he'll stop. It'll go away. And I'm like, when has a persistent man ever gone away? Like, what are you doing? Um, and it just didn't feel like they were looking out for their own well-being. It felt like everything kind of fell into the place that it was supposed to. And they were like, just like trotting along like, oh, that's just what happens. Um, which really bothered me. <laughs> so I gave this book three stars. <laughs> Then I read Brogan, uh, which is by Samantha Whiskey. This is another hockey romance. Uh, I read the ebook of this on Kindle Unlimited. I saw somebody talking about this on TikTok. I don't really trust TikTok's recommendations, but this one I was like, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's not that long. I'll see how it goes. It's about a hockey player who has a baby girl left on his front porch that he finds out he's the, he's so he finds out he's a father um and he is now forced to be a single dad because his baby was left on this front porch and he gets a nanny to help a live-in nanny and then he falls in love with the nanny it was very light fun not a lot of conflict um however in this one it felt like like I don't mind a lot of sex scenes. I don't mind that at all. That is not a problem for me. But when you're having just sex scenes and then you're talking about how close of a connection that they have and you're like trying to show that they're in, like in love, you need to actually show that they're in love, that there's chemistry, that there's like it seemed like their entire relationship was based off of the fact that they were attracted to each other and they didn't talk about anything and they didn't tell each other anything and they didn't communicate and they didn't, it didn't seem like they cared about each other. And when you're writing a book and having a book and you're having it be not like erotica, but like actually a romance, I need the romance element. Like I, I like the sex in it was fine. But it was all sex and I, one, when they weren't having sex, it just felt like they were just like, like you didn't see a connection between them at all. Um, and then I also didn't love the conflict of this book. I thought it was really dumb. Um, it was kind of basically like miscommunication. Again, they just had lack of communication and it just did not feel like a real romance. Then I read Pucked Love by Helena Hunting. This is the last book in the Pucked series. I read the ebook of this one and I, this whole Pucked series, some of them I really like and some of them I very much do not like. And this one was one that I was like in the middle. It was not really a favorite. It was not really one that I didn't like. Um, I'm gonna give this three stars, um, maybe three and a half. Like it was not, bad but it was not as good as the others so this one is about Charlene and Darren they um are both very again damaged from their backgrounds like they have a lot of commitment issues 
um and they I think the biggest problem with this run was their lack of communication and Darren had to, like decided that he wanted something like more but then he hadn't told Charlene and it just made it odd. I also felt like this one was very the the other characters were very rude to Charlene and Darren like I thought that it was like in a I don't think they meant to be um and they were so basically this book opens with Darren and his friends going over to his house and Charlene unbeknownst to Darren had gone to try and surprise him and she was naked in his living room surrounded by um like sex toys and the stuff that they use in the bedroom and all of the other guys kind of like freaked out and it had a lot of like BDSM type and like kink sex toys around and it really felt like they were really kink shaming them and judging them and I was like this is not friendship like I get like maybe a subtle like if, if it was a surprise because they had no idea but there's a difference between a surprise and them being like you need to explain right now because that shit's weird and I'm like stop it it's none of their business I also think that it's really dumb when a best friend is like you haven't shared with me but I shared everything with you it was your choice to share everything with, with me. You didn't have to share everything with me. Like, I didn't say that I was gonna share everything with you, so why should it be because we're best friends we have to share everything about my life? Just because that's how you, what you do. Like, I love you, we're still best friends, but I never told you I was gonna be sharing all of my aspects of my life with you. You know? I just, it felt very odd um, and I didn't love that a book that I think had the idea of trying to be sex positive was very much not. Um, and then I have one more. The last book that I read so far this month was Tattered by Devaney Perry. This one uh, is a romance about a girl who um, meets a guy in a bar one night and they have a one night stand and sh they meet again six years later in Montana where the guy finds out that he ha is a father um, and that he had no idea for the last six years and then they build their relationship off of that. <laughs> um, and I thought that um, Logan did a great job as a father and like trying to be as a father. But his demands when he was like immediately found out that he was like, oh my god, you must move to New York because I live in New York was very, I don't think he went about it very well. Um, again, this is another one where I really felt that lack of communication between them and it made their romance really hard for me because all of their problems would have been fine they had just talked to each other about what they wanted instead of having sex. And it's just a struggle so far this month because that is basically what I've found with so many of the books that I've been reading and I really, really, really want to pick up one that I love and I just haven't yet. Um, the Romance Takeover Readathon starts tomorrow so I'm really hoping that that means that I will pick up some better books but oh my lord communicate with your partners everyone so that's it um that's it for this video please let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are and recommend me a book you think that I will love because I'm struggling over here y'all um but that's it so please give it a like if you liked it and subscribe so I can see you in my next video bye